Hello, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a head CT in a 40-year-old female who has been having headaches and confusion. I'm going to allow you to look over these images on the head CT and we will be going on to the MRI shortly. Think about how you would describe very briefly the abnormalities you see here. I would say that there is a large mass in the frontal lobes extending across the extending across the corpus callosum there is high attenuation material in portions of the perimeter of the mass. There's mass effect with deformity of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. There is at least partial obstruction of the cerebrospinal fluid flow at this point with resultant enlargement of the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles, more so on the right than the left. There is, along with the high attenuation material in the perimeter of the mass, there is high attenuation material extending inferiorly from the right component of the mass, along with layering blood in the dependent aspect of the right lateral ventricle. So my first impression would be this would be a neoplasm and it's most likely a glioblastoma multiform extending across the midline through the anterior portion of the corpus callosum. I can't tell quite yet on these axial only CT images if it's through the genu of the corpus callosum or the rostrum, but we can see that better on an MRI. So since this is clearly blood, high attenuation material in the dependent aspect of the lateral ventricle with layering, then I would suspect this is too. It's possible that it could be a component of the tumor, but I don't think so. The tumor has a typical morphology of a glioblastoma extending through the corpus callosum and crossing the midline and that is called a butterfly glioma butterfly glioma and these are almost always the grade 4 highest grade glioma and that's glioblastoma multiform which is called GBM or grade 4 glioma you can see this butterfly has a larger right wing than a left wing as it were and here you can see it too and it's a little bit difficult to discriminate the margin of the tumor from the surrounding brain so let me help you with that you can certainly see it very nicely here and here you can see what looks like some blood in the mass and some blood dripping down from it probably a big clot and so the clotted portion remains here and the liquid portion of the blood from the tumor is layering in the dependent aspect here. If you look at the cortical sulci of the hemispheres, they're pretty much effaced. In other words, we don't see CSF in the cortical sulci. So that is an important index of how much mass effect is really going on here. And when we follow the mass from its more superior aspect here and and look at it as we go downward, we can see that it extends quite inferiorly. So I would say that the rostrum, the pointy little part of the corpus callosum that kind of goes like this, if you can see that, that curves around. So the most anterior inferior aspect of the corpus callosum is involved. So that would be the rostrum. So I would guess that this involves both rostrum 
and Genu, but as I say, we will see that better on an MRI. Okay, and let's move right on to that. I'll start out with an unenhanced T1 axial series. And you can see the anatomy here quite well. And here we have that same mass, much more clearly depicted. And this T1 weighted image shows some methemoglobin here in this clot. And then the blood that's dependent here is probably deoxyhemoglobin, more fresh blood that is newer, but we won't go into the characteristics of blood on MRI because that is more complex than what I wanted to address at this time. Okay, and you see the white matter surrounding the mass and there's a pretty sharp margination between the mass itself and the surrounding brain but generally these GBMs are so high grade that even brain that looks normal next to them is actually infiltrated with some of the cells from this tumor. So that's the unenhanced T1 weighted image. Here is a sagittal T1 weighted image showing the same features pretty much as what we just saw. You can see the shape of the right lateral ventricle here, the body of the ventricle, the atrium of the ventricle, the temporal horn of the right lateral ventricle, and the clot hanging down from the tumor within the body of the right lateral ventricle. Here you can see nice depiction of the pons and this is where all the crossing fibers go to and from the cerebellum. So this is the pons. This is the midbrain right here and you can maybe, maybe make out, here we go, one, two, one, two. Those are the colliculi. So there will be two superior colliculi here and two inferior colliculi here. Here you can see the optic nerve coursing toward the midbrain and actually here it's optic tract coursing toward the midbrain because it is after the optic chiasm. How do I know that? I don't see the optic chiasm itself clearly. No, but we know that the optic chiasm crosses above the cella tersica. So this would be optic chiasm here. Optic nerves would be the portions anterior to this that connect from the globe back to the optic chiasm. Then you have the chiasm at the level of the cella tersica and Remember that the right lateral aspect of both the right and left globe supplies fibers that go to the right side of the brain and the left side of the right and left globe supply fibers that go to the left side of the brain. And that's kind of hard to picture just based on the words but it means that the left world visually becomes represented in the right hemisphere, the occipital lobe, and the right side of the world is represented in the left side of the occipital lobe. Now here we can actually see a very nice depiction of the parieto-occipital fissure. The parieto-occipital fissure defines where the occipital lobe is located, which is all of this right here up to here and the visual cortex is in the posterior aspect of the occipital lobe and then anterior to that is parietal lobe and perhaps you have already seen my uh, lecture on determining where the central sulcus is from the parietal occipital fissure 
forward is all parietal lobe until you get to the central fissure or central sulcus and then it's frontal lobe from there anteriorly okay let's see what this looks like on contrast on T1 weighted MR images here are the T1 weighted images post gadolinium now we know that this is not necessarily enhancing even though it's bright because there's blood there and there was blood in a similar distribution to this so some of this may be enhancement and I would suspect it is but a lot of it is just the hemorrhage in the perimeter of the tumor that we were able to see clearly on CT and CT still has its value despite all of the achievements of MRI this is what structure? This is the intraventricular septum and it's bending displaced to the left because of the higher grade obstruction of the right lateral ventricle compared with the left lateral ventricle. Okay, and then if we look at the sagittal images, we can see that mass and here we go off to the right side, then toward the midline that's about midline and here's the left side so most of this bright signal is hemorrhage met hemoglobin that is giving us this high signal most of this is that high signal from the blood in this early stage of maturation met hemoglobin of the hemorrhage Max, Max, it's okay. Good boy, boy. And you can see nicely depicted the mass as it goes into the left hemisphere. Left hemisphere here. right hemisphere and what else can we see here what part of the corpus callosum is involved well we don't see it real clearly but it's right here so here is the body of the corpus callosum this part here is the genu and the mass appears to be arising primarily from the rostrum of the corpus callosum you can see it's poorly defined but you can see that the corpus callosum is here and it seems to be emanating from this port this portion so this is the genu of the corpus callosum right here the knee and it seems to be more from the rostrum that this mass arises at least in this midline level so this is a glioblastoma multiform which is a grade 4 glioma high grade very malignant tumor here it has a, a somewhat ironic valentine heart shape here you can see the cella tersica that area there with CSF in it and this would be the pituitary infundibulum diving behind the optic nerves or optic tracts I can't tell which on this one cut and here you have flow void here and here in the internal carotid arteries as they course through the cavernous sinus so here you have this bright signal which is enhancement of the venous sinuses on both sides of the cella tersica and that is the cavernous sinus through which the internal carotid arteries course okay that's it for now